On today's show, I present your chef for your Thanksgiving dinner. Romy and Michelle will be in attendance, and we talk about the greatest documentary ever made. So I think it's a documentary. Movie talk starts right now. You're an insane person. Special Thanksgiving That's episode. That's not how you talk to your host on Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, I got all dressed up. We got the, the wine coming, uh, some turkey, or at least some tryptophan naps will be setting in in about 40 minutes. But until then, hello, everybody, and welcome to a turkey Tacular episode of Collider Movie Talk. I am merely Mark Ellis. That is Perry Nemiroff. That is John Rocha. We Woo! showed up around these studios today just for you and your viewing pleasure. Hello to everybody. Hello to all you families watching. Hi, Nana. Hi, <laughs> hi Grandma. Hi, Grandpa. I don't know who's in your family, but I, if they waved hot back, then I appreciate the effort. All right, John Roca, Thanksgiving. You excited? Buenos dias. I love those. Look, you know, there you go. That's what I want to say. That's wow. what I want to say to my family. Buenos dias. Is that three, <laughs> three words no, no, in Spanish? No, no, no. <laughs> you know, it's Thanksgiving. It's a good time. Dia de gracias. It's a fantastic time. Uh, I'm here doing this show. I should be with my family, but I'm here doing this show because I love the fans that much. We're going to talk about a lot of fun things. I can't wait to do it. Uh, and I don't know where I'm going to be after Thanksgiving. I be with you. need you here because if there's any sort of Thanksgiving meal, you need somebody who's an expert in spoonsmanship. Oh, uh, Perry Nemiroff, you're up next. How do you like to celebrate Thanksgiving? What's your schedule? Well, I got to choose. We're, we're not actually having a home-cooked Thanksgiving meal because we never do, actually, because no one in my family ever cooks. But normally we do a <laughs> traditional Thanksgiving somewhere. Meatball shop? We're not, well, no, we're, we're going to a steak restaurant because it's also my birthday Yo. and I really wanted a piece of steak wow. for my birthday. Look at you. Okay. Yeah. Do a day. You, you, you never go wrong doing the cow. You know, I'm very basic with my Thanksgiving meal these days. When I was a kid, it was just, it was a whole lot of everything, a lot of gravy and all that crap. Mm. I just go turkey, tiny bit of mashed potatoes. Whole lot of course light. Well, that's my yeah. Thanksgiving dinner. That that's that's your right. every dinner. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's a whole pretty lot much of my every light. dinner, yeah. Perry told me one Perry told me a few weeks ago, like oh, no. happy her birthday, she'd be happy with a plate full of mashed her face and a plate full of mashed potatoes. <laughs> no, that's actually a pretty accurate yeah. uh description. If we were it's if we were doing a traditional say. uh Thanksgiving, I would take a pass on the turkey and I would just do a full oh. dinner of mashed potatoes and gravy. I'm I'm the a-hole who grabs that big leg as soon as possible. Of I grab you are. that leg first. That's the first thing I grab. I'm chomping on that. I'll like take all the business. turkey you can throw at me. You can keep the cranberry sauce for yourself. But I'll take a piece of that chocolate Nobody pie. likes cranberry sauce. No, yeah. nobody yeah. does. I love the cranberry sauce. It still is the shape of the can. Anyway, um, we are going <laughs> to talk about some of our favorite Thanksgiving movies and some current Thanksgiving movies, and we're just going to bundle it up in a whole little package here because we know that you couldn't go a day without Collider Movie Talk. That's why we showed up to the studio on Thanksgiving Day. Okay, so we're going to celebrate some movies that are currently out in theaters that are going to be released very shortly. And the first one up, no surprise given the host of this show, Creed 2. Creed 2 is in theaters, the story continuing of Adonis Creed, the son of Apollo Creed, who tragically was killed in the ring by Ivan Drago. So guess who Adonis was fighting? Yeah, Drago's kid. Don't worry, Rocky Balboa is going to be in his corner. I don't know who's going to win, but I know it's going to be a whole lot of excitement. Maybe I do know who won, and I'm just not telling you. So in honor of Creed 2, we we're going to talk about some of our favorite sports movies of all time. Perry Nemiroff, I'll allow you to tee this one up first. All right. The first one I'm going to go with is a recent edition, and it's Eddie the Eagle. Mm. I'll nice. just never forget the feeling that I had walking out of that movie because even though I had read up on it and, you know, you know where that movie's heading, still, when it hit that point, I just felt so just inspired. And I walked out of that theater with such a great pep in my step. It made me feel so, so good. So especially during Thanksgiving, that is probably one of the best sports movies I think you could watch. Uh, do you know why you walked out of the theater feeling like a million bucks? I'm afraid to ask why. Because they played Van Halen's jump towards the end of the movie, <laughs> and it happens to be at a climactic scene. So mm. enjoy Eddie the Eagle. John Roca, your number one entry for your favorite sports movie of all time in honor of Creed II. Look, the answer is Hoosiers. For God's sakes, Hoosiers is, one of, is the greatest sports movie ever made, period. Fantastic story. You will not give this young up. Kids, these young kids figure out how to play ball together, going against this juggernaut team at the end from a small town in Indiana, coming together. Gene Hackman running away from his own uh, problems he had as a, as a coach and another more high-profile program, bringing this team together and teaching them that teamwork is how you get through not only basketball, but life. And he tells them when he puts them all together, puts his hand on their hands and says, I love you guys. 
and it's a powerful moment. It's great stuff. Jimmy Chitwood forever. Hashtag that. Yeah, Jimmy Chitwood. Uh, it's uh, you know ten feet wherever you measure it. That's it's, right. It's always the same. Four buddy passes, Mark. With the cramp. Do you think should Markel Fultz start shooting free throws like Buddy? <laughs> I think Markel Fultz would need some good coaching from uh, Gene Hackman there. All right. Yeah. Like, Sloan. Hoosiers is a great sports movie. I'm sure the other team that the team had to play in the finals probably went through some stuff, given it was oh. the 1950s in Indiana. But mm -hmm. I digress. But I will stick in the Midwest because I'm going to talk about Rudy. I think Rudy is just such mm -hmm. a great knockdown, drag out, feel good sports movie. I don't know exactly what the true story is. I've yeah, heard that, that it's helps. not quite like it's depicted in the film, but it doesn't matter to me because when I see that movie, reality doesn't matter. All that does is that Rudy got in another dam on like his 18th try, and that's what that's the moment when I start welling up with tears is when he's on the bench and he takes the this is his last chance and he opens up says he got into Notre Dame not on the team yet just into Notre Dame gets really excited tries out for the team the rest is history Sean Aston so good in that making you root for Rudy and the entire Rudigers actually I, I guess I didn't like most of the Rudigers in that but I do like Rudy and um, Roca I can tell you something if um, you know you talk about being a Rudiger you can have a damn nice life if you're a Rudiger but That's Notre Dame no. No. Notre Dame, it's for great athletes. Yeah. Okay? That film's terrible. I don't know why you like it so <gasps> much. I do wow. not like Rudy at all. It's so ridiculous. The top 10 show, we talk about how much we hate that film all the time. But I will say this about it. It's so manipulative. How come reality is okay <laughs> and Rudy? How come ignoring reality is okay and Rudy, but, you know, ignoring reality and Hoosiers is not okay? Make your mind up there, Ellis. I just, I, you know, Rudy's better. <laughs> <laughs> You're an insane person. All right, well, give me some, other, ever give me some of your other favorite sports uh, movies. Rocky, now. absolutely. Rocky is, Rocky, uh, okay. yeah, I have to go Rocky because that's the one that, for me, uh, well, I saw it at an age where it, it was like so inspirational to see this guy have to confront his uh, demons in the ring. And it's not a conventional, um, a conventional sports story because he doesn't want to be the hero. He doesn't want to be chosen. That's what's incredible. He's a guy, he's a palooka. He's fighting for, for pennies on the dollar. He's, a, he's like a, a, a leg breaker. And then out of nowhere, fate touches him because of his name, his nickname, and now he has to confront this idea of facing the greatest of all time or the greatest champion. And he himself is like, no, I, I wouldn't be able to do my bet. I would embarrass myself and him, find a better fighter, and he can gets convinced, and then he has to go on this journey to confront his own fears to get in that ring. And you know what? He doesn't even win. That's incredible, because sometimes in life, you don't win, no matter how hard you train, but it's about the journey and the effort that you put in. That's what makes you a winner. Wow, that was uh, that was powerful stuff there. And I would throw Rocky Ford in that conversation as well, because Rocky Ford, I love <laughs> the fact that it's just the time the movie came out, the speech yeah. Rocky gives at the end, the training montages, nothing gets you out of bed and into the gym faster than turn on that movie right there, Rocky Ford. And obviously, we would not have gotten Creed two. Yeah. We're really Creed if we didn't get Rocky Four and the continuation of that. Perry Nemiroff, if you have any more sports movies you want to throw at us? I barely heard anything either of you said, because I keep thinking about how you don't like Rudy. Not oh. even like don't like Rudy. <laughs> you hate Rudy. Loathe Rudy. Wow, I just never I just heard that believe. before. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of us. <sighs> are, are there really? Yeah, we have a whole Facebook group. <laughs> him, it's, it's him and Matt knows. Those are, those Pretty are the much, two and, a, and a whole bunch of fake accounts that you guys created. <laughs> my, my second movie that I want to bring up is a childhood favorite that I still watch and rewatch over and over, and it still charms me to no end, and it's The Sandlot. Mm, nice. I love that okay. movie. Really, growing up, I was super into sports, so any sports movie that had a group of friends come together, and especially like an underdog-type story, that is the kind of movie that I was totally drawn to, and the fact that this has the beast in it made it even mm. more appealing to me sports and dogs i'm sold okay sports dogs and we move on to can you name the uh the high school that uh the milan beat in hoosiers in 1954 you mean the real milan yeah <laughs> western something kentucky um i believe it was uh no i don't know muncie that. central muncie central muncie central high school western kentucky is glory road that's my mistake and, yeah that was the college yeah. team, college that, team. That, that, beat, that, that beat pat riley right. and the rest of the kentucky wildcats that's right get deep into history now Adolf unless Ruffin. we digress from the other movies that are coming out into theaters this very weekend of thanksgiving we also get up next come on it's a movie that everybody wants to fall in love with it's ralph breaks the internet the sequel to wreck it ralph so many great uh things to see it's a feast for the eyes the ears a whole lot of good 
blast in this movie. Love well, the first Wreck It Ralph, really enjoyed this one. And with Wreck It Ralph, Ralph Breaks the Internet, we start thinking about video game movies. And the best video game movies of them all are John Roca yeah. gets to go first. Look, Wreck It Ralph. I'm going to throw it in there. The first record, Ralph, I'm going to throw it in there. It is, my, it is hands down my favorite Disney movie ever made, Pixar or otherwise. Hey, there's something about this guy's story, about constantly being told he has to be something and he wants to be something else. He wants to explore the journey he goes on and he discovers, just because you're a bad guy does not mean you're a bad guy. You know, This is great <laughs> stuff that goes on there. Zangi with great philosophy there. But throughout the whole movie, him and Sarah, John C. Riley and Sarah Silverman, just great chemistry, great, beautiful stuff they talk about and you get so invested in the journey that when Ralph makes that sacrifice with the Mentos at the end you can't help but start crying or break down a little bit and it's fantastic in that way uh, I love that as a video game movie okay so you're taking Wreck-It Ralph for your number one entry yeah. we're going to talk about some of our favorite video game movies Perrin Emeroff you're next up so I think this speaks to how bad video game adaptations mm. are because I'm also going to go with Wreck-It Ralph <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had to choose that one it's just like I'm going through I mean we already talked about the Mario brother, Brothers problem I have Oof. and you know I like things like let's say the first Resident Evil movie I'm into that one and even the Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider movies I have had a lot of fun with those but there's really not very many that I could get super excited about so when you talk about something that focuses on arcade games which I love like Wreck-It Ralph and you add that kind of story and that relationship yeah I've got to go with that, and especially this week when I can go watch Wreck-It Ralph and then go immediately and see Ralph Breaks the Internet because one of the greatest things about that sequel is that after I was finished watching Wreck-It Ralph, I'm like, oh, that is a nice, complete story. I don't necessarily need anything more, but they found the smartest way, one, to expand the world by putting them in the Internet, but two, expanding their relationship together because what winds up happening to the two of them not only changes them as individuals, but changes how they interact together. And it's a way that really does make you stop and think about certain relationships in your life. Yeah, I mean, Wreck It Ralph's, a, it's a great video game movie based on a, not a, a, a true video game, but it's got so much video gameness in it. It certainly counts amongst the best. Who's up next? Oh, is it my turn? Yeah. <laughs> Of course. Oh my God. Of course it's Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Damn it, Mortal Kombat is such a great, I haven't seen it in a long time, but it's <laughs> such a fun movie. I love the, the bracket style of them showing up. It's like, oh, okay, Liu Kang, who did he beat? Who did Sub-Zero beat? Now they're facing each other in like the Elite Eight, and I didn't like the way Sub-Zero went out in this movie. Mm. I, I thought Sub-Zero went out like a bit of a chump. I think that he, I, I don't think that would have happened in real life in Outworld, but I digress. Mortal Kombat is a great movie. It's still my favorite video game movie of all time. I need to watch it again. Liu Kang, Sonya, um, Johnny Cage, the other one. Johnny Cage, the Hollywood star with the agent who may or may not actually be a morphing Shang Tsung. Goro with his arms. It's just a, it's a fun movie, man. Mortal Kombat's great. You know what my favorite part about Mortal Kombat is? is at the beginning of the movie. Oh um, like, like they're on the dock to mm. go on this mysterious boat because there's this martial arts tournament where I can't even remember why everybody shows up, but it's like all these people, and not all of them are characters in the game. So Johnny Cage meets this guy, this, you know, plucky, you know, I'm sure he's a black belt in karate or whatever, and he's like, hey, you're Art Lee, right? And he's like, yeah. And it's like, are you in the video game? No? You're probably going to die. <laughs> you're probably not making it out of this alive. You're not even in the game, and you're going to Outworld? You're not making it, Art Lee. He fell, but Johnny Cage, he survived. Mortal Kombat Annihilation, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. So I would take that, and then I would also pair that with your second picks. What do we got? Pair, let's go to you first. I'm cheating again because Are we've got a video Ralph? game adaptation oh. problem. I'm not going back to Record Ralph. I'm going to say uh, Scott Pilgrim. That movie yeah. okay. is so is so good. It's good not choice. necessarily about video games, but obviously it's got a lot of video game flair mm -hmm. to it, even the structure of the entire movie. And... That was one that I was rooting for it so, so hardcore when it was hit in theaters. Mm -hmm. And we all know it kind of came and it went. It isn't really a box office hit, but the, the kind of the lasting legacy and the effect it had on me and how much I enjoy it and how colorful. I still vividly remember how colorful and exciting that promo campaign was. Mm -hmm. And especially when you go back and you look at the ensemble that's in that movie and, you, and you've seen what a good job they did in that and where they went after that. 
it's just, it was a, a perfect mixture of talent and style there. Okay, Perry uh, struggling to stay within the confines yeah. of the video game movies, but she found her way to the end zone with both Scott Pilgrim and Wreck-It Ralph. What does John Roca have? If you know anything about Perry Nimrod, she doesn't like rules and limitations, and she'll <laughs> jump around. Unless they're my rules. Those are her rules, yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're having steak on Thanksgiving, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> exactly. Her desk That's exactly is, how that conversation <laughs> went. Her, her desk is as cluttered as mine, just in different ways. Uh, so I will say Rampage is my choice. Okay. I thoroughly had a good time at this. Yes, it's a throwaway, frivolous, kind of dumb film, but for a video game adaptation, at least I enjoyed myself in the theater way more than I've enjoyed maybe any video game adaptation, and that includes those Tomb Raider films, which you just throw away from me. But Rampage was a lot of fun. The Rock is good in that movie. The special effects of those creatures are enjoyable to watch. Yeah, uh, is there why is man gonna yellow even in this thing? Yes, is Jeffrey Dean Morgan doing a version of Negan? Sure, but it's still <laughs> enjoyable to watch because of The Rock and the charm he has uh, in that film. So that's that's I enjoy that film very much in terms of video game. Yeah, I like Dwayne and George. Is that yeah, George? George. The, uh, George. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a fan of that relationship. Mine is uh, a little bit of a cheat. It's still a video game. It's just on your phone. Angry Birds. Angry Birds. Huh. Get some laughs in there, and it smells like somebody left a bird in the oven here because there's something <laughs> in the oven that I I don't know where it is, but there's a bird in the oven, and yeah. it's time to take the turkey out. So that's Angry Birds. I don't have a whole lot of defense for this movie. I'm just <laughs> I wanted to pick another video game movie that nobody else took, so I took Angry Birds. It's an app on your phone. Enjoy it today. <laughs> we move on to our next movie that's coming out, and it may not have as much blockbuster fanfare as either Ralph or Creed, but it does have some Oscar contention in its bones, and that would be Green Book. Green Book starring Viggo Mortensen and Mahersha Ali, based on a true story of unlikely pairing who become best of friends on a experimental sort of road trip sure. going to the South. I really like this movie. This might be my favorite movie of the year, at least in my top five. I think it should be a front runner for best picture and acting performances. And so Green Book, what we're going to do, courtesy of Perry came up with this, is that it's Green Book. It's about buddies. So buddy movies. Mm. It's a whole genre. So John Roca, yeah. you're my buddy. <laughs> Let you kick off. Aww. Aww. On certain days, you're my buddy. Yeah, certain days, I'm not. Yeah, certain days, I'm your whipping boy. Lethal Weapon is what <laughs> I would put number one. I wanted to stay from buddy cop movies, but I couldn't resist Lethal Weapon. This is one that just at the time it hit when I watched it in the theater, I, it just blew my mind of what an interesting film with a crazy guy, suicidal guy like Mel Gibson, and then Danny Glover, the staid family man who's too old for this bleep, having them come together and solve this crime. And it's some of Gibson's best work as an actor and of course Danny Glover as well but the whole story is filled with these other characters and you get Mr. Joshua Gary Busey before all the stuff happened with him really great villain uh, the dad from Dar Greg and Dharma and Greg is, a, is the main villain the scene that guy wow. play those characters and of course the scene when Danny Glover is tied up when they've got his daughter in the gutter in the like warehouse or wherever and then Mel Gibson's getting tortured by the guy with electricity and then he figures it out and he goes full rage monster throughout that whole thing just fantastic stuff and the way they come together to help him walk away from these suicidal feelings and get on with his life after he's lost his wife. It's a very powerful message at the end. Uh, like knowing it. you like I do, you're kind of like, Perry, if you can back me up on this, that'd be great. You're kind of like a perfect melding of Riggs and Murtaugh. <laughs> I'd agree with that. You got a little bit of that rage in yeah. you. You can tap into when you need it. You also got a little bit of that Danny Glover. Mm -hmm. Too old for this. Mm -hmm. I was eh. going to say a mix of uh, Wreck-It Ralph and George from Rampage, but that works too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Well, you're my Vanellope, so that, that works. <laughs> for it. me as well. Um, yes, I do have a mixture of both. I would agree with that. There are moments where I can see you old. kids grabbing a uh, grabbing a root beer together, whatever that place, uh, whatever that video game <laughs> oh, is. Oh, what's it? Oh, it's going to bother oh, me no, now. Oh, no, that's a Schmodown question. Yeah, no, I know the name of the arcade is Sugar Rush. Taps. Sugar Rush is the name Taps. of the Taps. Taps. Right, the root beer. Sugar Rush yes. is Vanellope's game. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Well, Taps. I'm going to take uh, a franchise I think is, I, I love Lethal Weapon. It's a great franchise. I'm going to go Beverly Hills Cop. Two. Mm. I think Beverly Hills Cop 2 is my favorite of the series. Axel Foley steals a house in the movie. He's hysterical. It's Eddie Murphy from start to finish. And he is buddies. And he's damn good buddies. Not just with uh, Judge Reinhold. Not just with Rosewood. And I, I keep wanting to call him by one of the other names that they call him in that movie. But it's Taggart and Rosewood. Yeah. But then it's also that, come on, man. The, the chief of the Beverly Hills Police Department, he gets, he gets gunned down. We got to save Lieutenant Bogomil, yeah. Ronnie Cox. And don't worry. He's okay. Thanks to Axel Foley, his dear friend and buddy so i'm going beverly hills cop 2 for my first entry might be the it might be tappers because it isn't the bartender named tapper 
I'll look. Clearly, I'll look. if this were, were a Schmodan question, I would have already lost mm -hmm. it. But um, Sam in trying, would not let you yeah, get away with that. Yeah, of mm -hmm. course not. Uh, in trying to come up with an answer to this question, Makuga tried to uh, pressure me into putting bad boys on my list, but mm -hmm. instead I went with Romy and Michelle's high school reunion. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah I, I watched a lot of this growing <laughs> up and still do today, and I love the two of them together. I get the biggest kick out of it, and it's really weird growing up, watching this over and over and over, and then revisiting it on your first high school reunion and just thinking about <laughs> how not that it really is, but the two of them are so funny together. That is is hands down one of the most quotable movies to me and I just I can't get enough of it and that, that dance scene that dance scene and then I'm just thinking about the how cool it was that they had the video call and mm. now we're walking around with FaceTime and everything <laughs> oh I love this 90s gold okay so uh who thought it was Tapper and who thought it was Taps I eventually concluded with Tapper Tappers okay. yeah, the name of the game is in fact Tapper there you oh. go. And that's the name of the bartender as well. Oh, yeah. Also named Tap. Okay, John Rook, you got another yep. uh, buddy movie? Look, yeah. Bad Boys is a great suggestion. Oh, that's a good Should call. Should have jumped onto yeah. it. But Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, that's my choice right there. The Outlaw. Too old. Yeah, have to go with a Western. Got to stay on brand myself. Uh, these guys are just fantastic. Robert Redford, Paul Newman, both guys in their prime at the time that they're making this movie. Such fantastic chemistry. Such a crime we didn't get more movies with them. How do we have more Gene Wilder, Richard Pryor movies than Paul Newman, Robert Redford movies? I don't know. Are you it's saying funny. something about Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor? I'm saying there should have been more, at least as many as uh, Richard Pryor and, and uh, uh, Gene Wilder have had there should have been more of these uh, but the chemistry with them in the whole film you know the jokes all the things they do it's a bit, basically a neo-western because it's breaking down these old conventions of what western and the high the high speaking they do this is more uh relatable interesting and fun most of all fun and still moving still touching that whole relationship there uh they have uh with the catherine ross in the movie all of that him put together his gang and then of course the jumping off scene you know when he's like what's wrong oh i can't swim what are you kidding the fuck will probably kill you. Those little moments are just gems all through Butch Cassidy's Sunday skin and a very sad ending. So One of those uh, films, it's just probably impossible to remake. Yeah. Right? Let's Butch hope Cassidy, so. Butch Cassidy's Sundance Kid. I mean, somebody's probably going to try it at some point. I was going to say, the second you said it, it's yeah. over. Uh, do you have another uh, I do. I went with Toy Story. That's like the ultimate uh, buddy story to me. Choice, and Paris. especially with Toy Story 4 on my mind right now with that teaser trailer and the other video that came out, the relationship between Buzz and Woody is one of the sweetest, most inspiring things. And to see that grow and then continue to grow over a full trilogy and then hopefully in Toy Story 4 as well. But... The two of them. It, I think they're kind of like an iconic uh, buddy duo. Yeah. It's weird how I think that our lists and the movies we're naming reflect like us way too much. They should. It's supposed <laughs> I guess, to be that I way, guess right? So. Um, you guys are missing one of the most iconic uh, two performances in cinema history. Oh boy. And that is a film directed by Tony Scott. Are you talking yeah, about yeah. Top Gun, son? I'm talking about The Last Boy Scout. No, the last I'm Boy talking Scout. about Bruce Willis Wait, and Damon what? Wayans. <laughs> Did, who would have thought that, that, that Jimmy Diggs, this all-pro quarterback, was falling on hard times and going to get together with this rough and tumble? I mean, come on, Bruce Willis, he's, he's, he's down and out. He's, but they, they team up, and they manage to save the day because uh, Jimmy Diggs is riding on a horse on a football field and has a, he's got like a Patrick Mahomes mm -hmm. size art because he's able to look at the, at the luxury box, throw a football from the 50-yard line on a horse riding it throw a football all the way up into the press box mm -hmm. and hit somebody and save their life just in the nick of time. It's a great movie. The Last Boy Scout. Check it's, it out with your family. That's a jig he does at the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, we're going to wrap it up here with a couple more categories just for fun because it is Thanksgiving. Got to talk about food movies. So, Perry Nemiroff, you're eating steak on Thanksgiving. I am. I, not the most conventional choice, but your choices today have not been that conventional. No. But I think they're all pretty darn good. So as far as a movie that you watch, it doesn't have to be about food. Yeah. It can be, or it can just have a particular food scene that you think is just so magical, memorable, and tummy rumbling worthy. What do you got? Oddly enough... I'm going to pick Waitress, even though I don't like baking and have no interest in making pies ever. But it's a it's a great, really uh, personal, dramatic story. Kerry Russell is fantastic in it. But especially with the focus on food during Thanksgiving, I really wanted to pick something that I think captures the importance of food so beautifully. And just watch that movie and how it captures how she puts the ingredients in the pies. Like every single thing is so, is so well shot and it means something and all the different 
Pecan Pies mean something to her journey as she grows throughout the movie. I just think the two things were incorporated so, so well together. Okay, that's a pretty good sell for pie. And now I'm I'm thinking about Pie John Roca. Yeah. What do you got? Did you see the one in New York? Did you see the musical with Sarah I wanted Bareilles? To see, I wanted to see it so, so badly. Okay. Yeah, I, I heard great things. I heard great things. I, my aunt went and saw it and says it's the greatest My thing, aunt so. says it's the greatest. Yeah, I mean, That's Aunt Wendy movie. knows everything. Oh, Wendy, now we got a new character <laughs> in the show. This is great. She's the best I character. Love it. Aunt Wendy. I'm, I want to meet her. Uh, aunt Wendy it was? Yeah. Yes. Wendy? Yes. Uh, I'll start with <laughs> Chef. That's uh, my. I really enjoyed that John Favreau film. I was, thir- I'm a massive fan. I have a sick fascination with food trucks, and <laughs> Do you I, really? yeah, I watched the Great Food Truck Race every season oh. on the Food Network, just since the first one, all the way through. This film was really interesting with uh, uh, John Favreau's journey through this whole movie with his kid. You know, uh, 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 what's her face from uh, Modern Family plays Sophia the Sophia Vergara. There. Sophia Vergara plays the wife there, but but he, it's about his journey with food and figuring this thing out and connecting with people. And whole, it's fun to watch. And Favreau is so engaging in ways that he rarely is in other films. So it's so much fun to enjoy. And he, the way he cooks the food, you really, I'm not a foodie, but I can like feel like a foodie while I'm watching the film. And that's a great gift that this film gives you. It made me want to be a foodie. Yeah. If sure. you had a food truck, what would it be? Mac and cheese. <laughs> I need more. I couldn't help uh, it. Well, I'll come back to you on that. Okay. So I'm going to spin around. Let me think about it. I just like, I, I, I want, I see Chef and I want to get into food trucks. I'm just, I'm, I'm just not there. I'm just, I, there's You've just never eaten a food truck? There's just something that feels weird about walking up to a, a vehicle, looking up, and then, uh-huh. I, I, can I please have some food? It just, I, it That's feels, what bugs you? I You're just, paying I, for it. It's, I know, but it's just I thought you were going to be concerned about food being made on a truck. No, yeah, I'm fine with that. Just, it just feels <laughs> something about the way it, you, you inter- interact. So if the Carl's weird. Jr. counter you love to go to was a little bit higher, you wouldn't meet there anymore. No, a drive through Now <laughs> you're speaking my language. But I'm going to go back to the world of Michelin stars and fancy restaurants with the Adam Sandler movie Spanglish. Now, is this the best movie? No. Adam Sandler's really good in it, as is Taylor Leone, as is a number of other people. But there's a scene in Spanglish where Adam Sandler's been working all day. He gets home. Everybody else is asleep, and he's hungry. So he He's not like me. He's not just going to go to Carl's Jr. on his way home. He's going to make himself just the the best looking sandwich of all time. He ruins it by putting an egg on there, which I would not do. But huh. it's his sandwich, and he just and it's just this man, and he just makes this huge sandwich, and he's about to take a bite. He's got this beer, ice cold, pours it, and right when he but he hears something, and one of the kids wake. I can't remember what happens, but it's like he had this perfect moment, and then <clears throat> just couldn't quite get it. That's why you shouldn't have a family. I'm so Ever. happy you brought that one up. Nobody ever gives that movie any credit. It's, yeah. I, it's okay. I really enjoy it. I never uh, I never go for a run without uh, hearing Taya Leone scream <laughs> left. <laughs> left, oh. left, going up the hills. Those hills in Beverly Hills, man, those are no joke. Uh, John Rook, you got any other food movies? Let's go guy. back to you. Running in Beverly Hills, is it tough, Mark? Oh, it geez. is. There's a lot of hills. You know what? <laughs> it's called Beverly Hills. <laughs> doesn't matter how rich or poor you are. If there's a hill, it's hard to run up it. <laughs> I run in Compton, son. No. Uh, <laughs> my other one is uh, Ratatouille. Have to throw Ratatouille yep, in there. Yep. So love that movie about food. Such a great voiceover work there from Patton Oswalt uh, and Jean Garofalo. And throughout the movie, just you get to see this rat who wants to do, once again, wants to do something everyone tells him he can't do, but he, he loves it so much. He pursues it. He fights for it. And then unconventionally, he finds a way to do it by using that kid's hair to help him cook and do all the kinds of things that he does there. And then in the end, he does connect with his father, who was initially against this idea, and they all come out in a great way. And of course, that scene with the ratatouille at the end, when he bites into it, that just that move, that scene alone is maybe one of my top three favorite scenes in Pixar for the way the camera zooms in and the and the critic is all of a sudden like 10 years old eating his mom's food. And that's what it's like sometimes when you eat certain food, it brings you back to a certain place when it's made really well and reminds you of your mom or someone who made it for you at a really great time in your life. Patton Oswalt is a great comic. I'm a yeah. fan. Never seen Ratatouille. What? Wow. Never seen Ratatouille. Oh, no. I will collect my belongings. And I will see myself out. Every yeah, you need to see that movie. Every extra viewing that you've made of Rudy and 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 not seen Ratatouille, <laughs> you should go to some jail for for the love of God. Uh, did y'all see that 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 vid that went viral last week of uh, the cat going up to the rat, then the rat chasing the cat? 
Oh, I, it's oh, amazing. No, I, see I didn't that, see that see. one, but did you it's see amazing. did you see our good friend uh, Michael Rappaport post a video about a cat? No. <laughs> this is hands down one of the funniest things I've ever wow. seen in my life. All right, well, I'll just take a go, look at go that. on his Instagram <laughs> and watch that video and just listen to how he narrates that video. I was Crack it. I must have watched that video with my mom and sister like 20 <laughs> times while we were in Florida. He's a pretty good announcer when he needs to be. Um, Perry Nemiroff, you got another Roka food stole mine. It was Ratatouille. Oh, okay. So to bring up, you, you said we could talk about food scenes too. Yeah. So some of my favorite food scenes, the s'mores scene in the Sandlot, obviously. Yeah. And I love the the scene in Heavyweights when they all go crazy and they have a big food party and they eat Twinkies on their pizza. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that scene I love. And that's all I can come up with off the top of my head. But I'm sure I could think of more in a second. I thought you would say Julie and Julia. Have you never seen Julie and Julia? That is no, a really I, good film. I think it's a I think it's a great film. Yeah. But if I picked like a full film, I wanted to be gotcha. that excited about it. But Rat Ratatouille was, yeah. was my number two. Ratatouille is great. Okay, then I am going to take another food scene. But look, these four when they get together, boy, do they love them some pizza. The pizza that you see at the beginning of Teenage Mutant <laughs> oh Ninja God. Turtles two, yes. Secret of the Ooze. It's classic New York pizza. The slices are so big. They're folding over the cheese just everywhere it looks it's the best looking pizza i've ever seen in my life but a close runner up would be kevin's pizza that he orders cheese pizza all for him mm -hmm. in home alone there's something about pizza and movies it just it it warms my heart even his microwave dinner looks good in that yeah, movie. yeah. <laughs> home alone pretty, pretty actually i have another good food scene if you've never seen the movie milk money i love the scene where where the I kid is milk money, yeah. yeah i really like that and movie Harris, where Melanie they Griffin. have where they have the microwave food uh races mm -hmm. it looks like the most unpleasant way to eat food because don't you want to sit and enjoy it but the yeah. two of them together are so charming all right surprise roca did not bring up nine and a half weeks and we move on to a movie that you should want to see with your family <laughs> probably not nine and a half weeks but these are what we're going to close our episode out oh today my. with uh we're just going to go two quick ones i'm going to go to perry for her two choices oh no. john roca for his two and then mine two that you like watching with your family look family sometimes you're you're the best of friends sometimes it gets a little awkward you just want to put on a movie so everybody can enjoy something together for for my family, it's usually the football game. We root against the Cowboys, root for the Redskins on a day like today mm -hmm. when they're playing. Uh, Barry Sanders used to entertain the hell out of us when he was playing for the Lions. Walter Payton before that with the Bears. Going against the Lions on Thanksgiving. Perry Nemiroff, movies that you enjoy watching with the entire family. Okay, so I'll go with a conventional choice. First, a family-friendly movie, and it's The Family Stone. That's a mm. great, yeah, great ensemble good movie. Good. I mean, it's so much fun to watch. There's so many different, charming, colorful members of that family, and to see them come together really does warm your heart, and that's a major tearjerker towards the end. Now, for my unconventional answer, I'm gonna create a little horror package right now, and I'll okay. say we watch, we'll watch probably something like The Hills Have Eyes, <laughs> Any Final Destination what? movie. With your family? Yeah. With Wendy the, and Nana? The Hills of Eyes remake in particular. That one is just so what? vicious, but whenever it's on, we can't turn it off. Wow, okay. What? John Roca, what a... All right. Um, what do you got? For me, my first selection is uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. That is absolutely one we watch over and over and over again. Great chemistry and humor from John Candy and Steve Martin. I mean, they're just... And the, and that's uh, those... The score is just... Doo, 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 doo. All that stuff, we just start bopping around as we're watching the movie. A lot of funny stuff. The way everything twists and turns. There you go. And then there's uh, <laughs> some sweet moments of uh, real honest uh, connection between John Candy's character and Steve Martin's character. And especially, like men do sometimes when you go too far in these battles and a guy comes back at you with some honesty. That scene where he's like, you know what would be great? If you had a, st a point to your story. He's like a talking Kathy doll. And then you see that that's finally hurt John Candy. And he says to him, he goes, you know, I like me. My wife likes me. My customers like me. And you're like, ah, oh, damn. Because you were on Steve Martin's side until that moment. It's and in that so moment, good. you're like, that's a human being I'm just berating right now. Yep. Damn it. And so throughout the movie, as they connect slowly but surely, and then you get that twist at the end in the train station, a heartbreaking twist, but still a very powerful ending, though, very of, of coming together. And then my other one is Big. Big! The Tom mm, Hanks. Good choice. Everyone loves this in my family. You know, you always love to go back to being a kid, and this is definitely a movie that does that for you. The Him and Robert Loja playing the piano. 
piano together is just fantastic. And then all of this, and uh, the relationship he has with Elizabeth Perkins throughout the movie and how that's enjoyable. You forget that it's a 10 year old having a bit of an adult relationship because a bit it's of an so adult sweet. Relationship. Uh, you know, they it, consummate the damn thing. <laughs> well, yes, I guess. Uh, but you know, the, it, the, but what happens at the end too, and the, the sound of Mercedes rule screaming when uh, Josh walks back into the door as a 10 year old thinking she had lost her son and then seeing him. It, that's a great way to end that movie. So just all around, just a fantastic one we enjoy watching. Yeah, we'll forget about how creepy Zoltan is and we'll just talk about Big and the, <laughs> the piano scene with Robert Loja, all that stuff's great for my family. I'll never forget everybody together. I think it was this was around Christmas, but it's not a Christmas movie, so I think it counts. Uh, and the first time that me and my brother, and I think my sister, had ever seen or heard of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Mm. Never heard of it before. It was a big Naked Gun fan. Uh, it was big Top Secret, like all those spoof movies. And then this movie came on and, and the rest of our family didn't know if the kids would find it funny. I was on the floor the entire time, just bawling with laughter. It is still, to this day, in my humble opinion, the funniest film ever made, and it's not even that close. Uh, the other movie that I really like, another movie that we watched for the first time at my grandma's house, I've never heard of it before, Field of Dreams. Field of uh, Dreams. Yeah. Could have put this in the sports movie, yeah, sure. but it's just, I think it's such a great family movie, such a great family message. My family has seen it over and over and over again, like you are going to continue to enjoy this episode of Collider Movie Talk over and over and <laughs> over again. Well, I want to thank for showing up on Thanksgiving, Perry Nemiroff, John Roca. Where can all the kids find you out there? You can find me at the Roca says on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm sure numerous Thanksgiving episodes on all my podcasts. Twitter and Instagram at P Nemiroff. And hey, if you go over to my YouTube channel, you might find a movie review with Nana. Oh, the movie review with nice. Nana. I, yep. I, I, you've never got more subscribers than I, what you just did. I watched eighth grade with Nana. Whoa. Oh, that's great. It, okay. it really was interesting sure. given, you know, the age gap mm -hmm. in terms of uh, the use of technology and how, how prevalent it is now and how she's super into Facebook. So I really wanted her take on that one. All right. I will watch eighth grade. Then I will go watch uh, Perry and Nana's oh, review. You guys can follow me at Mark Ellis Live. I'm just not seeing any good movies these days. <laughs> Ratatouille, eighth grade. I just keep watching Rudy over and over and over again. You can go to Mark MarkEllisLive.com for some upcoming tour dates, including got Phoenix on the books early next year, as well as some other notable stops. So enjoy the comedy live. And as we say goodbye, Adam, can we throw it to the wide? I'm going to move over to Perry's desk, and I'm going to show them this quick vid, and then you guys can watch our reaction. I'll tweet this out, too, on Thanksgiving. Check this out. This is, here we go. What is happening now? Right, so this oh. is the cat. Watch uh -oh. this. There's, there's, there's a bunch of these that are online, but this one is new. Watch the cat so he sees the rat, and then watch the rat just. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> this is the best. Wow. This is the best. Look, he's going to chase it back out into oh. the street. Hey, everybody. Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode of Collider Movie Talk. You want to watch more? Then click up here, or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. And if you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.